lesson we will look at the mathematical induction section of the advanced program math syllabus so mathematical induction is a very small section of the syllabus however it's important to know and be comfortable with it because it counts 12 to 14 marks of your final matric ap maths exam now when we look at uh, mathematical induction there are four steps that you will follow in every single question that you're given. Step one, you will be asked to prove it true for n equals one. Step two, you will assume that it's true for n equals k or any variable that you assign. Then you will, for step three, you will prove it true for n equals k, the variable that you have assigned over here. Sorry, n equals k plus 1. This should be n equals k plus 1. You'll prove it true for n equals k plus 1. And in step 4 is your conclusion where you simply conclude that if it's true for n equals 1 and n equals 1 plus 1, then it's true for 2 and so on. Therefore, true for all n values. Now, the idea of mathematical induction is if you prove something is true for one value, and it's true for that value plus one, and you prove that for any value, then you've proven that it is true for all values. So that is the theory that you are using when we deal with mathematical induction. So when you look at an example such as this one, it says prove that the sum to n with i equal one of i equals n over two times n plus one. So we take the left-hand side, which we know if we sub in 1, we're going to get 1, sub in 2, all the way to n. The sum to n equals n over 2, n plus 1. So the first step is to prove it true for n equals 1. So we take the left-hand side and we say, well, if we sub 1 into here, we get 1. And we, then we take the right-hand side, we sub 1 into here, and we get 1. Therefore, we, is, we have proven that it is true for n equals 1. In the next step, as we said, we assume it's true for an arbitrary value n equals k. So we assume that 1 plus 2 plus 3 to the value of k is equal to k over 2, k plus 1. So we assume that the sum of all of these values to the value, an arbitrary value k, is k over 2, k plus 1. So we assume that that is true. Now we need to prove that it's true for k plus 1 being the next value in the sequence. So we are required to prove that the right hand side equals k plus 1, that is our next value, over 2. So we're simply subbing k plus 1 in for k in our right hand side, k plus 1 plus 1, which is simplified to k plus 1, k plus 2 over 2. Then we take the right hand side from step 2 because we have now assumed that it's true for k that it is equal to k over 2, k plus 1. So we now take the right-hand side and we say, well, if we're adding all the terms to k and it is equal to this, then simply we need to add on another term of k plus 1. So we do that and we simplify it to get k squared plus k plus 2, k plus 2 over 2, which when we simplify that equals k plus 1, k plus 2 over 2, which we have then proven that our right hand side is equal to what we were required to prove therefore we've proven that it's that it is this will be true for a value an arbitrary value plus one and therefore it is true for any value plus one and therefore true for all values then an important step is to always conclude you must always conclude with a conclusion like this it is true for n equals one and n equals k plus one therefore if it's true for n equals two and so on um, you can also use conclusion such as stating that by the theory of mathematical induction, it is true that for n equals 1 and n equals k plus 1 and so on. And just make sure you include your conclusion in your work. Now we move on to the second example over here, which is similar to the one above, except we're now dealing with 3i plus 2. But we follow the same steps. So we need to prove it true for n equals 1. So we sub 1 into our left-hand side and we get 5. And we sub 1 into our right-hand side over here and we get 5. Therefore, it's true for n equals 1. Now, in our second step, we assume it's true for an arbitrary value n equals k. So we simply sub k in. So it's 5 plus 8 plus 11 dot 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 to 3k plus 2. We've subbed 
I, we've subbed k in for i over here, and on the right, we simply sub k in for n, and we get this. Then for the third step, we must prove that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So we are, we are required to prove that the right-hand side will equal k plus 1 over 2, bracket 3k plus 10, um, which we simplify to be 3k squared plus 13k plus 10 over 2. Now, the right-hand side, if we sum it to k terms, as we've said here, it is equal to this because we've assumed that up here. So it's k over 2, bracket 3k plus 7. And if we add on the next term, it's simply 3. We sub in our next term over here, which will be 3 times k plus 1 plus 2, which when we add these two together, we get k over 2, 3k plus 7 plus 3k plus 5. We then simply simplify that all and we come out at 3k squared plus 13k plus 10 over 2, which is equal to what we were required to prove over here. And therefore, it is true for n equals k plus 1. Then our fourth step is always to conclude and you must always remember this. And as done here, we simply conclude and then we have proved it by mathematical induction that the statement is true. Then we move on to another example where we have we need to prove that the sequence the sum to 2n minus 1 squared is equal to this over here so first we prove it's true for n equals 1 sub 1 into our left hand side and we get 1 we sub 1 into our right hand side and we get 1 therefore it is true for n equals 1 we assume it's true for n equals k so we sub in k and we assume that it will be equal to this where we've subbed in k then for step three, we are required to prove that it will be true for n equals k plus one. So we're required to prove that the right hand side will be equal to this statement over here. Our next term, we simply sub k plus one into our 2k minus one squared, which we've done here. And we, it comes out at 4k squared plus 4k plus one. Now we take what our term would have been that we assumed it, the sum would have been this much and if we're adding on the next term our sum will simply be this sum plus our next term so we've taken our sum plus our next term and we simplify that down to 4k squared plus 12k squared plus 11k plus 3 over 3 which is equal to this when this is multiplied out and therefore we've proven it true for n equals k plus 1. In our fourth step, we simply conclude and then we have proved that by mathematical induction, it is true that the statement holds. Now we look at problems in involving mathematical induction that are not series. So in an example like this, it says prove that 9 to the power of n plus 3 is divisible by 4. So we follow the same steps. We prove it true for n equals 1. So the left hand side of n equals 1 is 12. And this is divisible by 4. Then we assume it true for n equals k. So we take 9 to the k plus 3 equals 4 times r. Now we add in this r because it represents any number that will be divisible by 4, as they've asked us to be divis divisible by 4. If they'd said 5 or 6, we'd simply go 6r or 5r. Now you treat this statement, in a case like this, you treat this statement as a fact, which you can use to solve in the next step. Then when we prove it true for n equals k plus one, we simply go, well, nine to the k plus one plus three, we break that down into nine to the k times nine plus three. And from this fact over here, you will always use it in this step. So we take nine to the k plus three equals four r from here, as we've said, it's from the above fact. We manipulate that to, to get our 9k on its own. You will normally have to manipulate this. You need to look at this equation over here and see how will we be able to take out a common factor of 4, which is what we do over here to prove that it's divisible by 4. Now we can see if we sub 4r minus 3 in for 9k and we multiply that all out, we will get values that we can take a 4 out. So that is what we do. And we sub 4r minus 3 for the 9k multiplied by 9 plus 3. We multiply that all out and we get 36r minus 24, where we take out a common factor of 4 and we get that it has a common factor of 4 and therefore it is divisible by 4. Then our fourth step is to conclude as we normally do. And we simply say that by mathematical induction, if it's true for n equals 1 and n equals k plus 1, 
therefore it's true for 2, so on, and therefore 9 to the n plus 3 is divisible by 4. If we look at an example like this, it says prove that 8 to the n minus 5 to the n is divisible by 3. We look at our left hand side and we prove it true for n equals 1, so our left hand side comes out at 3 and it therefore is divisible by 3. We assume it true for n equals k. So once again, we go 8 to the k minus 5 to the k equals 3r, remembering to add in this variable over here to simply represent any number. And of course, the, the number that we want to be divisible by. Then we prove it true for n equals k plus 1. So we have 8 to the k plus 1 minus 5 to the k plus 1. We break that up. Then we work with our fact from above as we've worked over here and we've we've taken on 8k because we can see that we will get a, a common factor of 3 when we sub this in. So we sub this value in over here for 8k and we solve it all out to get 24r plus 3 times 5 to the k and then we are able to take out a common factor of 3 which indicates that it is divisible by 3. In our fourth step we must not forget to conclude and by mathematical induction, once we have concluded, it is evident that the statement holds true.